This conference will now be recorded. So good morning to all of you. My name is Girish. Uh, I'm based out of Bangalore. I'm basically an embedded systems and IoT uh, professional, basically work in the area of mostly in the embedded systems and IoT, specifically sensors, uh, connectivity between sensors and servers, database, visualization, that's the area I work. So I started my career uh, way back in 1992 in the area of chip design. So I worked in the chip design area, FPGAs and all for some time. Then I moved into software development for um, the factories, means the foundry, you know, where the, you design and manufacture the chips. So I was employed with Motorola at that time. Um, then in Motorola itself, you know, you Motorola was well known for making radios, then the electronic components and chips. Then Motorola itself changed into, into mobile handsets. That time I also moved into the software division of mobile handsets. So I spent quite a bit of my career in the design and development of mobile phones. Then I worked in the area of video conferencing, telepresence, video conferencing, equipments and all. Then I started something of my own. Now I work in a company of my own in the area of IoT, specifically Internet of Things and embedded systems. So that's my brief background. So do you have any questions? If you've got any questions, you can unmute your uh, microphone and speak to me. So I will give you a chance to ask me questions. So uh, I don't see anyone unmuting, so I'll go ahead with the uh, with the presentation of the slides. So through this, I will give you a brief introduction about what the course is about, how we are going to go ahead with the course, etc. So just hold on. Let me share the screen. Okay, so in this presentation, the next uh, few minutes or one hour, what we are going to talk is an overview of the training, what we offer at the VLSI Guru Institute. So here you can see my name and my email ID are at the, bill, at the bottom. Uh, you can see. So. So what is VLSI Guru? VLSI Guru is a premier institute offering trainings in the areas of VLSI embedded systems uh, and Internet of Things. So Internet of Things, I will come to what that is a little later if you are uh, new to it. So VLSI stands for very large scale integration. Uh, most of you know where a large number of components are packed into a tiny space. Uh, and it make use of the latest silicon technology. So today, most of the computers, mobile phones, everything, I wouldn't say most, almost everything is manufactured using the chips made out of VLSI. So they're called VLSI chips. We call it. Now, we have the computer. Then we have got the embedded systems. So we talked about mobile phones, computers, and now we're talking about embedded systems. So what are embedded systems? So embedded systems are nothing but computers itself, which are fixed inside another device. So if you look at a laptop or a desktop, you know that's a computer, right? We call it as a computer itself. Now, if you look at something else, a medical device, you don't call it as a computer, but there's a computer inside that. So those are called embedded systems. And Internet of Things is a new emerging area where all the embedded computers are interconnected to perform various tasks. That's all. It's nothing but networking itself. So um, why it is called Internet of Things? I will come to that a little later. So these are the three areas which we normally offer training, but your training, what you're planning to attend 
is more centric around embedded systems and there will be some connections with the iot too which is the latest area so definitely that has been covered how to make networking application that's where the internet of things will be covered so dlsi guru offers about i would say 100 hours that don't take those numbers exactly so i just put 16 weeks or uh, four months we can take it about 100 hours maybe of uh, embedded systems covering all important aspects uh, don't take those numbers because that vary from uh, topic to topic uh, based on your interest we may cover more topics sometimes it may less topics sometimes students wants you know they want more hands-on so it varies so that is just a four weeks i would say call it four hours of an uh, so of embedded systems covering all important aspects of embedded systems software design and iot so this will be through lectures there will be technical discussions there will be hands-on exercise there will be assignments projects some mock interviews so those who want to take some interviews and some tests also so some test papers also we will give you through this we will take you uh, through the course so tests may be in the form of written test or um, quizzes you know quiz means a written quiz those kind of uh, things will be conducted so lecture classes will explain the concepts to you we will allow you to discuss what you learned and then we will do hands-on exercises also and then apart from that once you do the instructor uh, guided hands-on exercise you'll be given some weekly assignments also to go home and do and do it yourself which eventually will be extended into a project something little more complex will be given to you in a long term which you can do it that will be your project course so those who want to go for interviews we will conduct some mock interviews also preferably over the telephone maybe few face to face just to get you a feel about what an interview is how the questions will come for you etc so we'll be covering these topics objectives of the course who should attend the course what is embedded systems and iot what's the future what's the components how embedded system is developed architecture uh, what are the tools used for that what are sensors and actuators etc and the course syllabus and the job opportunities will be covered here. so what's the objective of this course so the objective of this course is to develop a sound knowledge about embedded systems development so in this you will understand the components of an embedded systems you will develop the knowledge and skills that is needed to build software for the embedded systems you will develop skills to understand sensor sensors and actuators so how do you what a sensor means how do you connect a sensor to a board and how do you control an actuator etc in this process you will develop a sound knowledge of c good programming skills so that will become your base and you will be able to learn any computer language based on that so there is a saying if you learn one computer language you can learn any computer any any programming language so if you learn c the good part about c is based on c you get really good foundations in the C. You can go to any language, whether it's Python, whether it is Dart or anything or JavaScript, anything. You can learn that. Uh, that's the kind of uh, foundation we are planning to build for you. And uh, um, you will learn about sensors, actuators, and also about the embedded systems. So who this course is for? Just a minute. So this course is basically for for various type of students can attend this course in the past based on our experience. So students who are doing master's level courses and interested to learn embedded systems and doing projects for IoT can take this course. Fresh graduates with engineering background who would like to augment their knowledge in IoT and embedded systems. Uh, with hands on practice. So, those professionals who are employed and would like to seek career opportunities, and faculty from engineering college and scientific institution 
who are interested in learning about embedded systems and IoT. So these are the four categories who we normally see come and take this course. So I don't know about your background. Uh, I could not ask you. So if you are, if you can talk, can you unmute one by one unmute and tell me what your background is? Tell me your name and your background, what you are. I can see RT, I can see TE, yeah, one of you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, sir. Uh, I'm Ravi from with a background from electrical and electronics engineering. Yes. Okay. And I'm actively uh, trying to have a kind of a robotics a startup company. So first of okay. all, uh, uh, to build a base for it, I need uh, core knowledge on embedded systems because at the end of the point, all these uh, embedded systems, AI or any of the te training technologies will diverge to converge to one point. So robotics yes. especially needs embedded systems. So to have a core, uh, I mean, like good uh, sound knowledge in it, and also a little about hardware experience, right. how to uh, integrate multiple different variants, sensors, and actuators onto one point. I have choose uh, this course for that reason especially. Okay, good. So Ravi, you can unmute un yourself and next person can go. Who is the next person? Anybody can take the next slot. I can see Ram coming in. Ram, you want to speak? I can see GPVS. GPVS, you want to unmute and speak about yourself? No, I'm not able to hear any of you except uh, Ravi. Anybody else wants to speak other than Ravi? Oh, somebody's chatting. Oh, okay. Okay. So Shanmukhi is not able to speak. So I'll, she's messaging me. So two people. Just wait. Shanmugi, you can type. Okay, let's go ahead. So those who can't speak due to some reason, microphone or whatever be the reason, just message me through the chat window. I can see that, okay? So I will take a break and I will read your chat messages. Should not be a problem. By any case, you have a network problem or your microphone is not working or any other problem, just message me. So let's get into the definition of what an embedded system is. So the definition is when a computer becomes a part of another large system or when the computer becomes one of the components of a system, we call it an embedded computer. So as I explained earlier, we have laptops, we have desktops, we don't call them as embedded computers. But if you look at your drone, I'm sure all of you have seen a drone, either it's in a movie or in a video or in real life, all of you have seen a drone. We call it as a drone, but drone has got a computer inside, a very good processor inside. It has got memory, processor, operating system, everything running inside. So those computers which are fixed in something else is called an embedded computer. So cameras has got an embedded computer, cars has got a computer inside, aeroplanes has got, now your microwave oven the cooking you have got robots has got smartphones has got smart watches has got fridges you name it digital cameras everywhere has got a computer fixed inside it so today you might ask why my fridge don't have a computer inside tomorrow there will be 
because to keep the fridge working, its temperature control, etc., many other aspects, um, humidity control, and all those things, computers will get integrated inside. So cars these days, especially ignition control, do have a small computer inside. Uh, but expensive cars, you know, a lot more uh, facilities are fixed inside a uh, inside a computer. Sorry, inside a car, um, so that you know you get to do a lot of things. We'll come across those examples on the way. So I got, I assume you got a fairly good idea about what an idea about what an embedded computer is. It is nothing but the same computer but fixed inside a larger system. For example, there's a computer fixed inside a manufacturing plant. That's called an embedded computer. So many of you who has got embedded systems knowledge, very likely uh, you, you may get a job in a, a factory. Okay? In a factory, you might get a job. Assume you got a job, especially those with electrical engineering background or mechanical engineering background who takes this course. Uh, do uh, get a job in factories where you have a computer fixed inside a manufacturing equipment and you can program it they provide you facilities to program it and uh, you can control it control the machine so all those kind of things comes under the embedded systems uh, space so let's proceed so any questions if you've got any questions please uh, send me a chat message okay so i'll just give you one minute exactly to message me any questions any doubts anything which is not clear or you want me to re uh, repeat just message no okay we'll proceed so let's see what is so we talked about here when we started off we talked about so VLSI, we are not going to cover in this course because that's a different course. We'll talk about embedded systems and IoT. So we talked a good introduction about what an embedded system is. We'll see what an internet of things is. So I told you when a, when a lab, a computer is fixed inside a car, it becomes an embedded thing. What is the purpose of fixing a computer inside? There are multiple purposes. Assume you have a car and you are going out with your family for a holiday or a long drive, and your car suddenly develops a fault. Sometimes the car is not, you are not able to start the car. Suddenly, you know, you heard a sound, you pulled over the car to the roadside, and you're not able to start the car or it's giving some weird sound or it's giving smoke or what is you wanted to call a mechanic so what do you do you call a mechanic and give your location where you are and the mechanic will nearby mechanic or whoever it is will uh, come to you you have to wait some time for that whereas an iot enabled car what you can do is either the car will the computer onboard computer will detect a fault with the car and get the location of the car through with the help of a gps chip and send a message to a nearby the nearest workshop and informing them there is a car of this particular make has developed a fault and you need to send a mechanic so immediately the mechanic can dispatch a support vehicle to that particular spot come to the, where you are and get the car or you can press a button it will automatically inform the mechanic about your location and your trouble it will automatically done a diagnostics of the car and maybe the computer may be able to detect also what the fault is and inform the mechanic and the mechanic can come to the spot so these days most of the highways in in india all around india do have uh, authorized mechanic posted specifically to give on-road support so it will go to the nearest mechanic who has the expertise to repair most of the cars and that person will come to you. You don't have to really call and inform. The car will automatically take care of itself. So that's a real interesting use case. Let's look at another use case. Your car encounters with an accident. So 
the driver who is driving the car is unconscious. You need help. This time, you need, it's not the help from a mechanic what you need. You need an emergency help. The moment when the car collides with something, the sensors, specifically there's a category of sensor called accelerometers and shock detectors, they detect, yes, the car has collided with something and there's a problem. What it will do is it uses the, the GPS chip and get to know about the location where you are. And first thing it will do is inform the police. Then it informs the local mechanic and it will inform the ambulance service. So definitely when an accident happened, you need all the three people. A police has to come to do the legal work. Ambulance has to come to take you to the hospital. And you need a mechanic also to come to the spot to handle the broken car. So these three informations get automatically transmitted from your car to the needed locations. Just a minute. So this is another IoT use case. So the first case is when your car automatically develops a fault and you're all safe, it will detect the fault and inform the mechanic. The car comes across with an accident and it informs the police and uh, the mechanic and the ambulance service and they can come. So in developed countries like United States, the moment when an accident is reported, not through an IoT, of course, through a phone these days, uh, of course, IoT based, uh, mechanism is coming up but somebody informs there is an accident uh, you call up the accident and emergency number 100 and inform automatically the police ambulance service and the mechanic comes at the spot so they use a location using the the mobile phone location and then they arrive at the spot but what if the the the, the driver is unconscious that is when the iot device automatically detects the problem maybe even it can sense you sense the driver is unconscious because after the accident it will talk to the driver driver press this key tell me what your condition is driver is not responding it will automatically see the driver is unconscious so to that level uh, the embedded computers can um, can detect and inform the needed people about an accident so during the course, we will see how these things can be really done. You will come across sensors or various sensors that can be used for this kind of purpose. So maybe you can, uh, maybe as a project or something like that, you know, you can implement these kind of things um, and see how to build a end-to-end -end solution like this. So this is the net happens. From the ambulance service, the ambulance will come. From the mechanic shop, the towing guy along with the mechanic will come. And the police will also come to the spot and do the needful. And this is what happens even today. But an IoT device automatically takes care in case no one has seen the accident. So quite often, uh, what happens is sometimes the car take a toss and uh, go into a pit, especially in the mountainous region, uh, where there is a lot of mountains. So, especially in the direction of Kurg and all, it can happen. Uh, it's an accident-prone zone. And quite often, people may not even see the accident at night. But the IoT device will take care of that. So, that's the beauty about this IoT use case. Now, what's the relationship between IoT and embedded systems? So, that's one question I keep getting. Just a minute, I have a problem here. So, computers are evolving every day, and that is happening with embedded computers too. Means embedded computers are also becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. For example, five years back, if I want to have an embedded computer, a small board which will do whatever I want, a small functionality, um, it will cost me at least 3,000 rupees. Today, I can get the same thing, something very similar to that, for 300 to 400 rupees. So this is because the VLSI technology 
is evolving and bringing out uh, new methods of manufacturing so that the cost of the computers are dropping. So the IoT based connected device finds application in all these areas. So you got home based devices, banks and insurance companies, manufacturing units, space and defense unit, hospitals, you name it everywhere there is a there's an application uh, for this. So all these things are done with embedded devices or in short, in the past, computers or embedded computers were standalone devices. Today, none of the computers are standalone. They're all connected to the internet. So a moment when you have an embedded computer connected to an internet, we call it an IoT device. And that is the pet name given. It's nothing but embedded computer itself, an embedded computer with an internet connection designed for a specific purpose is called an IoT device. So IoT device is nothing but an embedded computer. So such embedded computers, what we talked about in the case of a car, is finding application in all these sectors. You can see in the manufacturing sector, we already talked about space and defense units. I, I don't have to tell you what is the application of space. You have got hospitals, you have automobiles and aeronautics, home-based devices, um, all these places, this IoT-based uh, devices are finding applications. Just a minute. Just want to collapse the screen that's give me a minute yeah. so what's the future of this iot so it is expected by 2023 or 2025 the market size for this will be about three trillion dollars means that many job opportunities will be there so this data was actually projected by a company called Gartner in 2017. So in 2023, uh, this is a kind of market for embedded systems. So there won't be any standalone embedded systems. They all will be connected to the internet. So if you want to learn embedded systems, you need to learn networking too, network programming too. So such devices find application in, in this many uh, sectors. And this is the kind of volume we are talking about. So if that's it, this is the future and this is how it's going to go. What are the components of a embedded systems? Just like any other system, any other computer, it has got hardware and software. Just like that, this also has got three, three sections. One is a hardware, one is a software, and other one is a networking part which connects to the internet. That's all. So if you buy a laptop, you know there's a hardware, there's a software called Windows and various applications, and you need a Wi-Fi connectivity or a or a Ethernet connectivity. So just like that, your embedded systems also has got these three components. Or in short, embedded computers are not that significantly different from a laptop or anything. Only thing it's smaller in size. The software development side is slightly different, but uh, it's very easy to learn. Nothing complicated. With practice, you'll be able to do that. So when you hear the word embedded, don't get uh, panic or don't get surprised. It is just another computer. That's what I wanted to communicate through this particular slide. So how do you development of an embedded system happen? So if you want to use a computer, a laptop in, your, in a bank or in a shop, what do you do? You normally go and order a desktop or a laptop from the nearby shop that comes with uh, Microsoft Windows installed in it. And um, you install the various applications, whatever you want, Microsoft Word or Excel or accounting softwares like Tally or those who want to do engineering designs will install AutoCAD, 
those who want to watch movies will install the movie software of course you will install your favorite application which is the chrome and internet explorer for browsing the websites that's all all you want to do the system is ready but for embedded thing it's slightly different you can't go and just buy off the shelf boards like that there are specific companies which supplies you the the boards you have to buy those boards maybe you may have to do a little bit of customization for it may or may not be and with that you develop the software so where do you buy these compute embedded computers from there are a lot of embedded suppliers like st microelectronics broadcom raspberry pi foundation they provide you with the needed hardware and they will have inbuilt networking capabilities also so these days nobody makes computers without uh, boards or anything like that uh, without networking facility so you go buy the board from them the software engineers with the embedded systems knowledge will develop the software and um, will have the will develop and the software development with the net will with the software engineer develop the software with the networking capabilities it can talk to the other computers of the internet so what is talking of course collecting some data sending it to a server or downloading some data from a server taking some photos like a, using a camera or recording a video and sending it to other other these are all embedded systems examples so basically you buy a board from the market and you develop the software for that, connect it over the internet and install it. So that's a development process. Now, how does it look like the architecture of an embedded computer? How does it look like? You know, in your college days, you would have seen there are four or five parts for a computer. One is the memory, CPU, input output device, that's it. Embedded systems comes with a slight difference, more or less the same. It has got a CPU, it has got an input device and output device. So on a regular computer, your input device is your keyboard and mouse. Whereas for an embedded device, it is a bunch of sensors, not just the keyboard and mouse, it will be a bunch of sensors too. At the output side, for a regular computer, you will see a display. Here you will see few other actuators, electromagnetic relays, motors, etc., will be connected to the output too. And when it comes to the memory, there's a slight difference. You have the primary memory, which is a RAM, which is as usual. But when it comes to secondary memory, it won't be a hard disk. It will be a memory card, which you normally find in your, inside your phone. So, embedded computers don't differ significantly, but there is a difference when it comes to the secondary storage, input output device. And the last but not the least is the ports you can see the ports this is called general purpose io ports your your laptop usually don't have these ports they are not exposed but embedded systems do expose this port this is where you attach your customized peripherals or your sensors and actuators actually to. normally you have a display hello yes anybody got a question yeah got a question just chat, just message me i can see that coming up so uh, it will be your actuators or sensors will be connected to the port and then finally the most important part today in today's world is the network so that by default it's there for everything so i didn't specify but embedded systems one of the most important part which comes is the access to the gpio port general purpose io ports that is where you actually attach many of these electromagnetic relay sensors electric motors etc uh, display mostly they come with a display port these days you don't have to use gpio but for connecting relays motors and all so let's say you want to you are doing a robotics project you are building a small robot so what do you do when you have to do a robot robot means robot hands has to move the lever has to move that's attached to a motor a stepper motor not the regular motor a stepper motor so the stepper motor will be connected to the gpio ports through a motor driver IC. So we'll talk about motor driver IC a little later. Uh, it will be connected to the GPIO port. The GPIO ports will, uh, will, will have a zero or one. Accordingly, the motor will rotate in, in the clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. Same thing with electromagnetic relays where you want to switch off and switch on a light. So these days you would have seen IoT enabled homes 
where as soon as somebody enters the house the light gets switched on automatically you would have seen in many shops whereas and corridors as soon as you enter the light will be switched on so that switch on and off is done with electromagnetic relays so these are called actuators so the presence is sensed through a sensor so usually a proximity sensor is used for that purpose so this is how the embedded system is actually uh, the architecture for embedded systems look like it's not significantly different from a laptop or a desktop it's more or less the same but only think there are some uh, deviations so how do we develop software for an embedded system what are the tools required for that so here when it comes to an embedded system there is a difference it is not as simple as what you do on a laptop so i assume most of you are coming with a background engineering background wherein you would have learned at least one programming language in your course am i right is there a difference can you please message me on your chat window whether there is someone who has not learned any programming language here in your college days Can you please message okay so i assume all of you have learned a programming language by now i don't see any message so there what you do is you write a program in c or whatever language and use a compiler what the compiler will do is convert the high level language into the machine language which is normally a dot exe file and you run it that's it simple from the command prompt or from your desktop you can double click and run it but that is not the case with your uh, embedded systems we need lot more tools there let's see how we can develop a uh, software for an embedded system using a high level language so definitely for that also we use compilers so what we do is we write the software in in a high level language mostly in c okay mostly in c. some cases we use python i will talk about that little later and uh, mostly in c and we use a compiler and compile that into the corresponding machine language of that board of that processor and then what we do is we simulate it before we put it into the board we use a simulator and simulate it why because these embedded systems if you put a software which is buggy it can break the system or it can break the board the board may become useless so you don't want that to happen first you test it on a software simulator see it is all working fine and then you flash it into the into the embedded system on the, onto the board and you start working on it so that is one rule another route is you write it in assembly language assembly language is something which is very close to the machine language and uh, you write an assembly language assemble it make an uh, make an executable and then run it now in between you might face a lot of problems with the software does not work you want to know what is going on you use a tool called debugger of course debuggers exist in laptops also but you can get away without using debuggers many students have seen you don't use debuggers because they use printf but in an embedded system you need a debugger because you don't have a display not always will have a display on the board so use a debugger and debug the system so uh, use a debugger so we have a compiler and simulator and then you run it you have a compiler compile the language run it and debug it alternatively you can write your programs in assembly language also and run it we may be touching this upon may not go deep because today not many students are interested in learning assembly language if you want to get an introduction um, let me know we will see how we can give you an introduction or get a feel about what assemblers and assembly language are. that's up to your interest okay then the last one i did not talk i will come about sensor simulation and test bench a little later is the interpreter so as i told you the high level languages has got a problem you have to compile make the machine language and run it that is not the case always 
So, suppose you want to try out a cube program. What do you do? You can write in a high level script called Python. These days, most of the embedded systems do have a Python interpreter. The way an interpreter works is you don't have to compile, convert it into machine language, flash it and all. Into, put it into the memory and all, nothing. You can just write the program, give it to interpreter and straight away run it. So it takes line by line and execute it. So the good part about interpreter is software development is very easy if you are using an interpreter. So that is another option. So again, we may not be touching assembly language and interpreted Python. Uh, it depends upon the interest of the students. If you are interested, let us know. We may be able to give you some introduction uh, in that aspect too. Uh, but mostly the course we will be talking about compilers, simulators, debuggers, etc. Mostly in C, we will be doing the development. Uh, the other topics will be up to your interest. Then we didn't talk about sensor simulators and test bins. So most of the IoT devices I told you need sensors. But let's say you want to test a sensor for a car which will detect a collision. Can you create a collision and really test it? No, you can't. So we use simulators, software simulators for that. They mimic the sensors. So we will be using, instead of real sensors, we'll be using a lot of software sensors to mimic the behavior of a real sensor. So you know it's free of cost. You can install it on your laptop. You really don't have to reach the embedded board to do that. But of course, we can do that on embedded boards also. Uh, mimic the sensor, you can mimic the sensors and uh, do a lot of development. And then comes the test bench. Test bench is where you connect the sensor, everything together, and you test the whole thing. So as a part of the project, you know, you will be building a test bench and a, 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 a simulator also. So, um, the test bench is actually a, a big big part today when when you go for an interview they might ask how did you test so usually when they ask you how did you test you know you don't give the test cases rather you start with the test setup the test setup is nothing but the test bench itself a physical test setup is what is called a test bench so i will take a small break basically to allow you to ask me questions so those who have any questions uh, can you put it into the chat system? I will take it right. Any questions about the slides we've talked about so far? Okay, so far nothing. I will just hold down for a minute or two. Let me start the counter. So I will put a two minutes timer once the timer expires i will take your time and type it up or raise your hand either way
Okay, I'm back. So far, I have not received any questions. At least I don't see. Oh, sorry, so I got that answer, sir. Sorry, I can see. Okay, I can see the questions now. Sure. So, uh, there are two questions. One is, uh, can you repeat about the test bench once again? Very good question. And the other question is fees. Regarding fees, Sangamesh Ramesh has asked, uh, what is a fees? Fees, we will um, we will tell you a little later. Um, you will, I will get you a kind of, uh, we will not discuss about the fees in this in this section. Okay? But I will take the question what Ravi Teja has asked about the test bench. So, let's say you develop an embedded system let's say small robotics aerobotics you are not connected to the motors and all other kind of things but you want to test whether the software is actually running or not how do you test it before you connect to the motor because you don't want something to be connected to the motor and the motor uh, wrong signals going to the motor and it may even spoil it so we want to see the signals coming out of the embedded board is right or not? Is it giving the right signals? So what we do is, we will put a sensor simulator, a software simulator which simulate the sensor. Let's say you want to simulate a robotic arm which will move when it feels hot, when it feels hot. That means you just bring a candle or something hot near the arm, it just moves away. Simple. It's not a maybe an industrial application or a fun application you can write like that. So what do you need? You need a temperature sensor and a robotic arm. Now, the moment when the temperature is sensed, the robotic arm has to move away. That is a problem. So the sensor will detect the temperature and send the signal to the robot to rotate in anti-clockwise direction. Now, what happens is what you do in a real test bench is you put a sensor simulator as the input and at the output where the gpios come you may connect an oscilloscope or a logic analyzer to that or a simple logging mechanism to that to see what the signal is then from the sensor simulator you will simulate the conditions where the temp heat is coming the moment when the heat is coming the output of the embedded system should be to rotate the motor in anticlockwise. Is it giving the right bit pattern or the byte pattern at the GPIO pins or not? That the test bench will validate. In the test bench, we would have already given what to expect. So if you don't get an expected pattern, it will show an error. If it gets an accepted pattern, it will show pass. So Let's say you wanted to design a robotic arm which will rotate left when you show a candle and rotate rightwards when you bring a piece of ice near it. So it's all temperature sensing. That's all. Right. So the question is, when you bring a piece of ice, is it showing the bit pattern for the rotation towards right? And when you bring a candle flame is it generating the bit pattern to rotate left that is what so bit pattern you know it may be complex one and one and zeros so it'll be difficult to read but the test pad, test bench will read it compare it to the expected pattern and then uh, tell you it is right or not that is what the test bench is. so test bench is something which you build in a customized way so it's a customized uh, approach and uh, it's a big subject also test bench is a very big subject we can only give an introduction and show you a couple of examples, but uh, there is a lot of things around it. That's why I specifically showed these two, sensor simulator 
and test bench. Ravi, is it clear to you? Okay. So uh, Ravi has said yes. Um, so Sang uh, Sang Sang Sangana Ramesh. Uh, Sanga Sangana Ramesh. Ramesh. Ramesh has asked a question. What's the duration? Typically, it is we start. We said that it's about four months. Uh, is the course but again it depends upon the students how fast you learn how fast uh, you are able to do projects how fast you are able to do assignments and all so if you are the kind who do assignments fast we may be able to go a little faster also so if you are slow we have to go a little slow we have to go with your pace uh, so that you learn and if you will finish the course early you know you will get to do more number of assignments more number of hands on you will be able to do that is the thing um, so you typically it's around four months that's what our experience has shown so it's not a classroom kind of thing where like a college kind of course you know one semester you will go do these these kind of things there are a lot of hands-on things comes into the picture so a lot of things depends upon the nature of the students who take the course also regarding internship yes that's a good question uh, that what we will do you can we will discuss about the internship thing what are the options available for internship um, directly uh, we'll have a separate session for that maybe Srinivas will explain that to you how do how can we help a part of that we do we don't promise anything um, let's see what options are available because internship is something which is uh, uh, in the somebody hands okay so it's a full online or offline course good question the lectures simulations programming part can be taught to you online if you come to the institute you can uh, listen to the classes also but when it comes to the hands-on part you need to come to the institute especially doing on the board we don't have any other option so in the past let me tell you in the past there are many students whom i have taught online but what they did they bought the hardware of their own but in the before the pre-corona times the course was conducted in the institute students do come to the institute and uh, they take the course they do hands-on everything of their own but the po during the corona period during the lockdown and the post lockdown we may be able to do uh, quite a bit in the online mode but when it comes to hands-on part uh, specifically touching the board and showing you how to bring up the board and all uh, we need to think slightly differently uh, because many of you are in your hometowns so that part we will work out some plan for you maybe you may have to come to the institute stay somewhere nearby uh, to do the hands-on and go back or maybe we'll think about i won't be able to commit anything right now but the programming part lecture part learning part discussions part all those things can happen through online. is that clear Ramesh, Sangama Ramesh, Sangana Ramesh. I don't know how to pronounce. Sorry about that. Sangana Ramesh. Okay. Okay. Very good. Any more questions from anybody? So Ravi has asked me a question. Sangana Ramesh has asked me a question. Uh, who else? Shanmukhi, do you have any questions? No. Okay, let's proceed. So, I've given you a brief introduction about how sensors are connected to, in this case, how sensors are actually connected to the, the board, right, through the GPI opens. But that is only at a high level view. Now, sensors just connecting to the GPIO pins only establishes an electrical connection. That is all. Just like you connect a webcam to your laptop or your USB mouse to the laptop, it only establishes an electrical connection. But there is a lot more to it than the electrical connection. The electrical connection just gives you the power and establishes a data path. You need something called a protocol to communicate with that particular sensor. A low-level protocol. 
So the keyboard, if you use, if you notice that your keyboard, it's called a USB keyboard, USB mouse. It uses a protocol called USB. Whereas sensors, not all sensors are USB based because they are very, USB is a little costly to implement. The hardware is a little costly. So there are other protocols called I2C, SPI, UR, etc. So they are very simple protocols which you can implement with your programming knowledge itself. I2C, SPI, UR, and all. So these sensors usually use I2C, SPI, UR, or some of them don't even use any protocol to communicate. So for example, there's a small display called Nokia 5110 display which is usually used for teaching students embedded computer that uses um, spy protocol there is another one which another display uses the i2c protocol so connecting a display to a board is not just enough that only establishes the electrical connectivity we need a protocol also for the sensors to communicate with the computer those are called these um, these protocols so whenever you want to learn how a sensor or an actuator is integrated a board you need to understand the interface as well as the protocol too just a minute i want just a minute So I hope you understood about the sensor. So as a part of the course, we will be touching these communication protocols also for you. Sorry. So as a part of the course, we will be touching, uh, uh, giving you the knowledge about these I2C spy you are. Actual learning happens only when you really do a small project uh, using that. For example, for a display, you you write a display driver using one of these protocols. That's when you really get to learn this protocol. So we already talked about uh, the IoT uh, and we talked about uh, the, uh, the Internet of the, uh, the embedded systems. So as I told you, Embedded systems, systems are no more standalone. They are networked. And that's why we call it network, net, uh, IoT devices. So if you look at a shop, you know this, this particular device, what you see in the shop. This is an embedded computer. It's actually a computer. It used to be a lot of companies making this. VeriSign, VeriFold, many companies make this, uh, these devices. There's a, you don't see any wire attached to it. It's wirelessly connected to the network. So there's a big area of opportunity in this area, even today, uh, where the credit card swipe machines are. So if you want to make a machine, design a machine like that, you, it is not just the sensors, I2C protocol, and the software development knowledge. You need to know about the network programming also. So what is network programming? Network programming is, how do you write a program which will communicate with a remote machine? So that is where you call as a TCP IP sockets comes into the picture. Sockets is a very basic thing. So using sockets, you can open a connection to a remote machine, just like the way we open a file. I am sure you all of you have learned programming, how to open a file, F open, file name, read mode, just like that you can open a connectivity to connection to a machine just by knowing the IP address. So uh, they need to learn, if you, if you are learning embedded systems, you need to learn network programming also. Now the question is, what about hardware knowledge? This is a standard question. To what extent an embedded systems engineer should know about computer hardware? So if you are learning a traditional programming on a host-based system, laptop or a server, you really don't have to know what is inside your laptop or what is inside your desktop. As long as you know the concept, that is good enough. But that is not the case with embedded. You need to go a little more. You need a basic knowledge to understand the hardware board 
processor, memory map, port, etc. So that is enough to start with. However, the chip level or circuit level knowledge is not required. So students ask me, this, do I need to know about the PCB level knowledge to program? No. If you have a knowledge that's good enough, not problem. But you really don't need to know. You need to know the memory map, how the memory addresses are made, what are the GPIO ports, how do you connect uh, sensors to that, what sort of processor it is, what sort of hardware board it is. Those are the things you need to know. So during the course, we'll be using a, a customized hardware board for this purpose. So through that, you will get to know an ARM-based processor will be used. And this concept will be explained to you uh, during that, what the level of knowledge. So you'll get the board, you'll connect the sensors to that, and then you will play with it. So there is a small section planned for that also. So what do we have? So based on whatever we talk, we have designed the course for you. So this is the course overview. So basically, I would say, the high level view of the syllabus by now some whatever i talked i'm sure you would have got what we're going to cover so in an overview we'll be covering what an embedded systems is we'll be giving you a refresher about analog and digital systems and architecture about the embedded systems and desktop operating system fundamentals basic concepts about compilers assemblers and interpreters once you get that we will jump into writing a small C program for an embedded systems. So you will get to know the program, what you wrote in your college days, how you can uh, run it on an embedded system. Then from there onwards, we will be teaching you the programming fundamentals on C because you need to have a very thorough understanding of C if you want to touch any of these things, any of this file. So that is where we'll be teaching you data structures, case studies, and we will be giving an introduction into the object-oriented programming in C++. So you need to know C++ programming and all those things. So we cover it very well about C program. Let me repeat it. Without learning C, you cannot touch the other areas. So we'll be giving a lot of exercises on that segment, data structures, except everything will be covered. Then we will touch the communication protocols with peripherals. I told you I2C, uh spy and those kind of there are many communication protocols so that will be covered we'll talk about sensors and actuators you will play with the real sensors and actuators which are mounted on the board we'll be talking about iot how to how to look network compute network programming and how do we interface with the sensors and actuators and then you will be touching a real board the architecture of a board uh, get to know an ARM processor fundamentals. What exactly is an ARM processor? It is some fundamentals will be covered, and all these exercises you will be doing on a uh, ARM uh, processor board, Cortex M series board. So we'll be covering Cortex M3, some of the fundamentals. We won't be teaching you assembly language, but we'll be teaching you C programming on the Cortex M3 board. Uh, there's a customized board, uh, customized. Uh, uh, board for that in a minute i will show you just give me a minute how the board looks like I just got the, the picture of that board this is the board so this board comes with um, a debugger i told you, you know this is what a debugger look like to connect to the laptop it has comes with an lcd display comes with a potentiometer to control the volume uh, then it comes with uh, few other sensors uh, you can attach these are the gpo pins where you can attach the things and uh, you can see cortex arm cortex application development board so this is the board you have joystick you got push buttons everything so this is the board in which you do so if you want to touch this board and do the programming the basic thing you need to do know is c programming very well otherwise you'll struggle a lot that's why we cover the c programming first so that is about the course overview at a high level. Now, students do ask me another question. What are the job opportunities here? As I told you, there is by 2023, there will be a market of 9 billion 
India needs a lot of professionals trained in em embedded systems and IoT in the coming years. So 2020, we believe industries such as utilities, manufacturing, automotive will adopt IoT. Yes, that has already started happening because I work in that area. A lot of companies are looking for people uh, with that kind of background. Many times they don't even go for IoT because they're not getting professionals. In addition, healthcare, retail, and agriculture are also uh, making a lot of IoT adoption. Because I know a lot of companies work on the agriculture side of that. And uh, manufacturing, transportation, you would have already seen that automotive and transportation. Utilities, yes, some of the apartments are actually using this right now, IoT based uh, for the security purpose. Uh, some of you would have seen this. So there is a lot of potential for IoT in this area. So the job opportunities are going to evolve in that space. A lot of startups have come up in the IoT segment today, which are providing. For example, I know a company called MyGate. They provide utilities in this uh, for the apartment security and for their factories. Uh, uh, there is another company which is uh, for the automotive segment. I forgot their name. They are in the automotive segment. And in the transportation segment, almost every logistic company today have got a GPS attached tag attached to the to the cargo which has been shipped. So get to know the location about, about the cargo, especially the vehicle. For example, school buses today are attached with the GPS. So sitting in the school and, and the parents sitting at home get to know where the kid is at any given point of time. So that is another IoT use case. Uh, healthcare, uh, there are a lot of devices which are coming in which can read your pulse, BP, and your oxygen saturation level, specifically in the COVID era, and transmits to the doctors which are sitting in a hospital through the internet. So, all those kind of with the COVID times, I'm assuming that a lot of progress will happen in this particular segment, healthcare, uh, because of the um, in the IoT, the IoT will find a lot of application healthcare because of the current COVID situation. That's what I'm hoping for. And I'm seeing that a lot of companies uh, working in that segment. So don't worry, there is opportunities. It's your skill what really matters. Your knowledge is what really matters. So after the completion of the course, what do I get? Yes, we will be mentoring students about their uh, doubts and clarifications. So after the course, we are not going to say bye bye to you. If you got any questions, you can call up either me or any of the instructors, and we'll be glad to help you. Let's say you're going for an interview and you've got some doubts. You want to clarify last minute doubts. Definitely, we will help you to clarify your doubts before going for interview. Are there any special preparations I need to do? Let's say you're going for an automotive company for a job. What sort of preparations I need to do? We'll give you some hints and tips for that. Uh, prior to that, we will conduct some mock sessions also for the interviews. Um, how does an interview look like? And then, in case one or two classes you miss, we'll try to provide you backup classes through the recordings. So this is something which we cannot always promise. We try to record as many sessions as we can, lectures. But there are a lot of informal discussions happens uh, in the classrooms, specifically for the classroom sessions, which all of them may not be recorded, may not be you may be boring all some of them to listen to because it's an informal interactive discussion but the lecture classes most of them we record and in case you miss uh, you can go through them so that is about the post course completion and uh, let's say you want to listen to one or two course uh, recordings just before you go for the interview you can talk to our admin department they will help you with that so that's all from my side about the introduction of the course I'm opening up to you for your questions. So any questions, put it in your chat window. I'll be happy to answer them. Go ahead. Oh, already I've got a few questions. Okay. So which operating system usually uh, Tejpal has asked this question. Which operating system we will be covering mostly on the Linux part. Linux is where we touch all these things. Uh, on the Linux is what we do. Uh, now, Ramesh, Sangana Ramesh has asked a question. 
uh, the syllabus looks like my college one. Well, this is a high-level syllabus uh, not prepared by a university. Uh, the microscopic one, I don't know what you mean by specialized one. The, the, I've given you a hint about where it deviates. We'll be working on a real hardware board. You will be doing uh, hands-on work. I cannot tell you what are the hands-on work you will be doing. That depends upon the student's nature. But some of the concepts what you learned in the college will come here. It is not drastically different from the college. You will not be, uh, for example, C programming. Uh, C programming, wherever you go in the world, it will be the same. But the kind of difference comes in. Uh, I will come to that point. I will come to what is an embedded C. Um, kind of difference comes as you'll be doing a lot of hands-on things than you learned in the college, specifically from an application perspective, specifically maybe from an interview perspective. So we will not be giving you exact interview questions capsule form that may be impossible in today's world. Today, the way interviews happen is they might ask you an arbitrary question which nobody has seen before. You should be able to use your, apply your knowledge and give an answer for that. That can happen only if your foundations are good with reference to the hands-on perspective. So we'll be doing you a lot of hands-on perspective uh, from the C programming, more than what you've learned in a college. So data structures, yes, I've learned, computer science students learn, but if I throw a question on data structure, typically interview question, many students struggle. Ask you to write a program in data structure, they struggle. So that is what we really help you to cover specifically for the industry. So for example, you would have learned how to use recursion uh, to find the factorial of a number. I will come to Ram, I will come to your question. Uh, factorial of a number. But how do you use recursion for other applications like traversal of a tree, traversal of a linked list, what are the application of recursion? We'll be talk, we'll be trying to discuss about that. So that is where we deviate from the college. But C programming is the same. Wherever you go in this world, C programming is the same. Just to give you a, a, an example, uh, just to give you the high spot, uh, NASA had sent a probe to the Mars and it uses an operating system called VxWorks. VxWorks uses the same C programming itself. There is nothing different from the C what you learned. Only difference is uh, that C program is written by some of the experienced engineers uh, who has experience in writing space application. But it's a normal C. That gives me the question, takes me to the question of embedded C, etc. So, Sangana Ramesh, uh, I will come to Avanesh, I will come to your question. I saw your question. So, Sangana Ramesh, let me give you a very clear thing. There is nothing called an embedded C, it's a marketing terminology. C is C. It's a C programming language originally developed by. Can you tell me, by the way, can you tell me, since you already learned in college, who are the founders who invented, who developed the C programming language? Can you type it down? Since you said you already learned it in college. How was C programming developed? Can anybody give me the answer? Who developed the C? And where was it developed? Any idea? Yes, very good. Avanesh and uh, Sangam Narichi has given. Dennis and Richie. They were the original. One sec, just give me, just give me. So, just a, minute, just a small uh, diversion. So, Dennis and Ritchie developed C language for the purpose of Unix operating system, which they developed for AT&T Bell Telephone Laboratories. And from Unix only, we the Linux evolved eventually. C is a C. Syntax, semantics, everything remains same. Even you go into the embedded space, there is no difference. Then what is the embedded C? The difference is, how do we write embedded applications in C? 
actually that is same c only only difference is you will be directly accessing the memory of the the memory addresses of these peripheral devices etc you will be using a lot of bitwise operators in c you will be using specialized data structures for c in c for embedded purpose that is where it is more of a programming concept rather than anything else so yes the programming concepts needed for embedded systems we will be covering for you and that is where one place you differ from the textbooks so if you go to a textbook okay by the way sangana ramesh uh, which is the textbook you followed in college can you tell me for c programming or anybody anybody of you can give me the answer Kuk, should be knowing the name of your textbook by now. The author or anything. Balaguru Swami, wonderful. That's a textbook which is followed throughout India, one of the very good authors. So Balaguru Swami, yes, textbook covers a lot of C in that. But that C is the most generic C, what is originally developed by Dennis and Richie. That doesn't cover the extensions or the style in which, I won't say extension, the style in which you need to do it for the embedded system. So that delta is what we cover. Of course, we'll use Balaguri Swami for your reference. If you want to have a doubt, you go back to Balaguri Swami itself. But uh, uh, the practice sessions, there'll be a lot, lot of problems will be given. You can always refer to theoretical part, you can refer to Balaguri Swami, but hands-on you will be doing with us. And uh, by the way, there is nothing called an embedded C. That's a marketing terminology. I don't want to use that. There is a style in which we write for embedded systems. That is where it differs. Definitely, we will be covering that as a when you do on the board, you will see the difference of that. Okay. Okay. I will come to Avinash. I will come to. I will take your first question. Um, will we will be getting hands-on IoT-based project. Yes. So if you wish to do some IoT based project where two computers talk to each other, either your small device talk to a network, to a server or something like that, definitely you, you can select one of those things and do it. It's up to you what exactly you would like to do. We'll give you thought process, we'll give you the ideas, you can select, you can do it with our guidance. But that doing is by you, we will not do it for you. Be, let me be very clear. We will not do the project for you and make the project report for you. So there are a lot of students come to us. That is a different beyond. I'm not going to cover that here. Uh, so you, we will teach you C. You will will guide you, and you have to write the program. So, so the next question is: Is there any scope to switch from teaching to professional industry after doing this course? How about interview opportunities? Okay. Yes, of course you are in a teaching. Teaching is not a bad profession. Let me tell you. I've been in the industry for a long time and I still do teaching as a part time job even today because I enjoy teaching. But I definitely understand your aspiration to go into the industry. Yes, you can. What really industry needs is the hands on knowledge. So if you look at any interview, any professional interview, I'm talking about a professional interview, what they look at it is can this person do a write a program? completely by his own without the guidance or without the support of a senior how good is this person for that that is a key thing companies look for if you are there if you have got they can hire you as a freshman does not matter you would teaching before definitely if you really follow our course do all the assignments and exercise build up the skill that is up to you will practice properly and practice properly definitely you will be able to answer interview questions and i have seen that happening with many students so i'll come to the opportunities i'll interview opportunities i'll come to so uh, facing an interview for getting a job in the industry definitely yes if you are a teaching profession uh, you know what it is already you know how it deviates from the for the by the end of the course you will learn that and uh, we'll give you assignments towards that we'll give you mock interviews telephonic interviews, etc., so that you get a feel about how to do an interview uh, and uh, get you ready for that. But effort is from your side, not from our side. Okay, now, how about interview opportunities? So to be honest, we are not a placement company. 
Okay, we don't do placement and we don't do customized play, uh, training to place you in a in an industry. We don't do that. But when opportunities come, we will pass it on to you. So let's say when you complete the course, where there are opportunities we get to know, we can pass that on to you. Maybe you know we can talk to the company and you know we can send your profile to them. And but it is up to you to clear the interview. Uh, uh, those kind of parts we will not be able to influence them, pay some money or no, we don't do those kind of things. We are professional that way. Uh, our objective is to train you for that. Uh, I'm very clear about that part. We will not be influencing the interviewers under any circumstances. No, that won't be doing. But yes, there are opportunity. But opportunities are not in our hand. We do talk to companies. We do inform them. We are offering a course. Do you want students like that? Yes, we have some students. We need three, four candidates. Can you send it across? Yes, we let you know immediately, and you can go and take the interview. That uh, facility, that option is already available. But no promise we will get you x number of interviews we'll place you those that we cannot promise because that is not in our hands uh, that comes to that is i would like to come to the next question how about resume preparation for experience okay i would uh, recommend i would uh, ask you the i would recommend you pass this question to srinivas uh, he will guide you with that normally i don't do uh, the resume preparation part uh because i don't know what your expectation is uh, so you can talk to srinivas about that he will guide you with it uh, internship and interview opportunities as i told you if you get to know we will pass it on to you through our contacts and there are a lot of students who are getting to know about that uh, but i won't be able to guarantee specifically in this corona situation nothing is in our hands but definitely srinivas will do whatever is possible uh, from his side uh, towards that you can talk to srinivas more more than me more than me answering that question i would say you pass take the question or pass a question to srinivas he will answer to it. i know that's a very important question in your mind you know uh, paying the money and taking the course uh, how is it going to help you definitely i appreciate the question yeah i have a doubt on um, i have a doubt like which board we will be using for the entire course is it 8051 or arm base coming to the part of any platform like azure or good question so we won't be using 8051 for this course rather we will be using an arm based board i just showed you the board in a few minutes back this is the board we'll be using uh, let me take you to that board. i just showed it in a minute i will Sorry, some um, I showed it. One sec, I'm not able to minimize my screen. Sorry, let me see. I can show you that board. Okay, it is a processor from uh, from Freescale Semiconductors. Exactly. One sec, let me. Try to tell you the name of the board. Can you see? Can you see the screen now? Let me share the screen. There's some problem with this. Okay. One sec, just let me try to read out the name of the processor because the hardware part is handled by my friend. Um, he's handling the hardware part. Just give me a minute. It's a Cortex M3 board, uh, means uh, Cortex M3 board. So Cortex M series will be using ARM. Um, the question is, I don't know exactly which ARM architecture 
it is taking that particular board from that question chandan will be able to answer that question uh, uh, definitely h051 it's a uh, arm cortex m3 board and uh, most likely it'll be arm 7 i don't think it is arm 9 but i will get back to you on that post, which arm architecture it is following now coming to the part of iot any platform like azure or aws is used okay Azure and AWS provides you an IoT environment. Now, that will be which platform to use or something will not be a part of the course. That will be a part of the project if you, you would like to do. So if you want to do a project on Azure or AWS, uh, definitely you can do that. Um, we can give you the guidance for it. Uh, but will not be a part of the syllabus because Azure and AWS are vast topics but for your iot purpose yes you can uh, take that as a project there and try it out that's not a problem so did i answer all your questions uh, yeah some more questions i have seen that some of you have seen but i am unable to share that wait a minute let me see i can show you the board give me a minute my screen is having some problem yeah 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 it, i got it this is my laptop. This is the. Can you see me? Can you see uh, the the board now? Yes, you can see the board. This is the board. So uh, this got a display. All those things is Cortex M3 based architecture, and uh, this is the debugging uh, debugger, which is connect, which is used to connect to the connect to the laptop. So there is a question from um, uh, Tejpal83, which operating system? So for your C programming purpose, we will be using Linux. Or you can do mostly it is Linux. Uh, that is where you will be. But that C programming, what you learn will be operating system independent. You can apply it into most of the operating systems. Uh, it won't be specific to Windows, but mostly inclined towards Linux. That is the way it is. Um, but it will be it will be generic c we'll be teaching you the operating some fundamentals will cover but it'll be generic so i think i have taken all the questions from you any more questions Oh, stage pulse question, how many projects do you support? So that is a very, so as I told you, projects depends upon you, okay? Uh, yeah, I will, Ram, I will take your question. How many projects? So it depends upon you. So towards the end of the course or towards the mid of the course, you can start doing your project. You would like to select one topic, and uh, yes i want to do this and the instructors you can talk to the instructors at that time because i am one of the instructors for you okay um, I'm, I'm only some topics uh, i've only come for there are other instructors so you whoever is in charge of your course you can talk to the person and uh, he will help you to identify a course based on your skills and your interest and you can do that project now after completing it yes there are still more time definitely you can go ahead and do that more number of projects so that you can add it into your resume um it purely depends upon you i've seen students uh i've seen two type of students since you ask this person one who who exactly do one project there are another kind of students who complete the project early enough and come and ask me sir can you give me one more idea about the project so i'll give two three ideas okay then that student will go and collect that and do the project so and the course gets complete and the student is sitting at home sir can i do a project at home okay go ahead and do i will guide you i will, I will give you. this third time the student is independently doing a project so this is one category of student the second category of students are they just do the course and exactly do one project as per the project the course completion and finish it off and they put it in their resume then there's a third category of students who struggle even to complete one project so that you know we have to help them out you know somehow to complete it so 
so it all depends upon you how many projects you will be able to complete if you have got time we will be able to minimum one you should be able to do that is all we can commit but if you have time yes definitely we'll be happy to help you with more should not be a problem um may i know the difference between embedded automotive and embedded iot ram i think you missed some sections in the beginning that is why you're asking this question but still i will answer that question there is not much of difference an embedded computer is an embedded but it depends upon embedded computers are built to go inside something right so the difference is on the hardware what is it built for so for an automotive hardware will be different for a internet device which is used inside your house so if it goes into the automotive the specifications will be slightly different for example it has to undergo a lot more vibrations heat humidity and all those kind of physical per electrical parameters will be different whereas what you use inside a fridge may be slightly different hardware but the software development for both is more or less the same there is not much of difference if you honestly learn the concept and write know how to write a program definitely you will be able to apply your skills it doesn't matter whether you're applying it in the automotive segment or you are applying for an iot which goes inside your fridge or a microwave oven it does not matter okay is python language a part of the course at the moment not maybe we can it's not officially a part of the course right now uh, uh, but uh, if you are interested we can share some uh, videos for you for your learning purpose at the moment that is a status uh, mostly Srinivas will be able to answer that question more specifically. I don't, uh, um, I don't want to commit on that part because quite a bit of time is taken uh, by in that four months duration. Quite a bit is taken by the embedded uh, hands-on and C programming itself. So if you have time, definitely we can share some online uh, videos with you. That should not be a problem. Okay, David, they just next question is, sir, should I refresh my topics in C language specifically to catch up the traction of the course or else? Okay, so again, Ravi, um, uh, uh, Ravi, the question is, it depends upon the students. There are three types of students coming in the course. Someone who reasonably knows C programming, someone who was like in between, somebody who don't know anything. So we address the course for the people who don't know C. We start from the basics really basics so whoever sit through the course will be able to understand uh, from the basics itself we'll cover but the thing is if you come with a refresh if you come with your balaguru swami textbook refreshed it will be a lot easier for you to pick up in fact you'll be able to do the assignments much faster and you know what happens when you do assignments much faster you will be given more number of assignments so you will be getting better practice so that is where if you come with the refreshed knowledge about c so uh, it all depends upon you but it is not a must but if you come with the refreshed knowledge definitely it'll be helpful for you uh, you'll enjoy the course a lot more than a person who come without refreshed knowledge can you cover can you cover all the automotive domain protocol can i to see you are no we won't be able to cover everything because these are all oceans what we cover is i2c and you what right basically you what mostly you what um, i2c i think that will be covered that question will be specifically answered by uh, the hardware the teacher who covers the hardware just give me a minute i will confirm about the can he's including can in that or not just give me a minute just i want to mute you for a minute and then i will come back
Oh, folks, I'm back. I just uh, talked to the your instructor who is going to cover this batch. Okay, this batch who is going to cover the hardware part. He confirmed that, that I2C will be covered, UART will be covered, SPY will be covered, and CAN will also be covered. In addition to this, there are two or three new protocols uh, which he planned to introduce in this course. In the previous courses, uh, the four protocols were covered. CAN, I2C, UART, and SPY were covered. So one more small change in what I have told you. Uh, I just spoke to about the real-time project. Ram is asking any real-time. Yes, there will be real-time projects. Okay? Now, the real-time projects is something which you can put in the resume and all, all those kind of real-time projects. Yes. There, apart from the um, uh, course project, will minimum you'll be doing one, I was telling you. Uh, you will be about, you'll be getting about three to five projects to do in that during the course phase. Because I specifically I checked with that how many are you planning to cover? He said, this course I'm planning to cover more than one. So, um, basically for a fresher who are not employed anywhere you have got the time to work minimum uh, we'll let you do three if you have time you can go up to five that is a plan and if you are experienced or you are employed somewhere uh, you will be able to cover about uh, uh, three projects uh, based upon your time limits so that is how it works so that is about the question from ram uh, do you cover drivers as well Yes, we cover drivers as well uh, as a part of the hardware thing. High level and low level drivers will be touched upon and you will be taught how to make. So I think I've covered all the questions. Any more questions? Feel free to ask me. Any more questions? Okay. If you don't have any more questions, can I conclude the session with your permission? Please send me a message, all of you. Now, now there is a question from Tejpal. Is this real time? I don't know what exactly you mean by real time. We cannot put you into an industry where a live work happens because this is a training institute. So the nature of the projects will be something from the industry, but you will not be working for an industry. For example, let's say you go to a, a company and do a project as an internship. No, we will not be able to do that. But industry standard projects, yes, we can give you. You will be working in the institute. So I think that is what you're asking me uh, because real time. But did I answer the question, Tejpal? Or do you mean real time means our task kind of real time? Please. Uh, Please clarify, Ram, did I answer your question? Ram and Tejpal, did I answer your question in correctly or? Uh... Yes, you can include those projects in your resumes. Now, showing the experience depends upon the company. Number of years equivalent depends on that. You have to talk to Srinivas, how you can map this into the number of years of experience, uh, whether that I won't be able to, but you can put these projects in your resume to show your knowledge levels for sure. You can do that. So, any more questions? Thank you. 
thinking about to put three plus years of experience okay so tejpal i would say what you do is you sync up with srinivas on this particular topic um, srinivas will be able to guide you better than me uh, in this aspect about you thinking about three years plus years experience in the embedded industry um, srinivas or one of the instructors can guide you okay so that part he will take care so i won't be able to answer this question any more questions tejpal has said thank you to me i think tejpal don't have any questions what about ram and others avinash ram sangana ramesh uh, shanmukhi oh cost of the bow okay the cost of the bow is about uh, uh, 5000 rupees that's what i have understood the the cost of the bow i mean the the retail but in large scale i am not very sure how much you'll be able to give with the bow so ram has confirmed sangama sangana ramesh has confirmed ravi has confirmed avinesh any questions okay i am uh, if there are no more questions i am concluding the sessions thank you very much for your time if you have got any more questions, uh, you can get back to Srinivas. Oh, there is one more question. Sir, I've ordered an ARM discovery board. Is that fine to work? Okay, so should be ARM discovery board from Freescale, if I'm not wrong. Freescale or uh, ST Microelectronics. Which one is it? STMF or ST Microelectronics? You can work with that, not a problem. That will be Cortex M4 and you will be able to use it. Uh, but you need to sync up with your instructor for that particular part, okay? Uh, uh, whether the instructor is most likely you will say yes, but I won't be able to commit to you because this board part will be done by another person. Uh, but technically, yes, whatever you learned, I would I would give you like this. Whatever you learn on the board, what institute gives you, definitely you will be able to extend it to the ARM discovery board also. Uh, only thing you will have to use something called, you will be, sorry, you'll be using something called a keel simulator keel tools using keel tools you will be able to use it arm discovery board is a pretty good board and it's very easy to integrate also there should not be any problem so ravi is okay ram is okay sangana ramesh is okay oh next question how is the market right now for embedded offer? Do you think it would be up within six months? Well, market for embedded cannot die. That is the way I look at it. Uh, it cannot go away. This Corona definitely has caused an impact across the world. Uh, everything has slowed down. In fact, we are not able to get the boards because of the slowdown. Uh, many components are not available. So because of that, all these kind of confusion, there will be a little bit of slowdown. But I won't be able to attach a time of six months or three months or one year to that. It may start partially coming up within three months itself if the corona cases comes under control. It all depends upon how fast a vaccine comes and comes under control. Or we learn how to manage it. Because people can't sit without a job. People has to work, something has to go, something has to run so definitely the market will come up um, but it all depends upon the corona so be positive and uh, use this time to learn as much as you can through the online resources that's what i improve your knowledge do projects take guidance and so that by the time the market comes up you are ready for any kind of job sometimes you may get a partially embedded partially post-based job you should be willing to take up that job and your c skills should be such that you can apply into any segment 
So the embedded companies, you know, they take not just for embedded load. They may ask you to do host-based programming also, because you should be able to, you should be willing to do that too. So from that perspective, yes, uh, you you have a good good time to three to six months time to sharpen your skills, develop your skills, and by the time when the market comes up, you'll be ready. Yeah, I am connected on the LinkedIn. You are connected in LinkedIn. If possible, can we connect there as well? Yeah, you can search for Girish Kumar and you will find them. You can send me messages. That's not a problem. Definitely, that's not an issue. Um, where is my LinkedIn profile? Let me see if I'm there or not. Oh, I'm not logged in. But you can search for Girish Kumar. Uh, I don't have the link right now. You can just search for Girish Kumar, you will find it. Let me just see, I can show you the link. Just give me a minute. I'm stop sharing the screen. So you can see my screen. This is my Girish Kumar. This is my name. You can look. So I don't actually am not a full-time teacher. I am I have a company of my own uh, the IoT segment, work in the IoT segment. So um, I do consulting work there. So this is my profile. Yes, this is what you got it right. No, no, no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me just see. Is that the right one? Wait a minute, Tejpal. No, 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 no. This is a different person. This is a different Girish. No, no. I have. No, no, no. This is my profile. Okay. Any more questions from your side? Uh, Ravi Teja, yes, I own a company, yes, uh, but hiring I am not doing right now. Uh, no, I don't offer a job to anybody through this course. Hiring I, happens, if at all I do hiring, I hiring through different uh, different way. Uh, now, let me tell you what my company is doing. Mine is a consulting company and uh, I am the loan employee. I don't have anybody else other than me in the company. It's a one man show. It's a properly registered company under the government of India. And whenever I need people, I take consultants. So I don't need long time hires for most of the project. So I hire consultants from my contact list. I bring them in and they work and I pay them. So that's a mode I normally work. Any more questions? Okay. So I think uh, we will conclude the session. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, 
uh, thank you very much for the time if you have got any questions feel free to get back to the institute and once again regarding your placements interview opportunities internship i cannot commit anything speak to the institute the institute will explain to you about that aspects okay so thank you very much bye bye and see you during the course so i am closing the session thank you much bye bye